paper goblins. Are we all ready? I think we're doing good. I think we're going to be doing awesome. Getting some paper craft done. We've got our skizzers. Yes. No blood or rust on these ones, though. I've got my X-Acto knife. I've got my glue, rubber cement, as well as I've got my glue stick and things. Good morning. Uh, do, do, do. Uh, do, do, do. Everything. Good morning, Chris. Hopefully everything's coming through okay. Um, please let me know if anything is going on weird, but we're we're gonna be crafting, crafting this morning. Okay, I think we're ready. Um, as long as there's no technical issues, we should be good to craft ready to go perfect then let's get started all right my paper goblins we're gonna set you aside for now and we're gonna pull out the red folder uh, this has my current um, pile of paper terrain I I did the good work of clipping and snipping of most of this in advance so that um, we could get right to actually seeing the stuff built. Um, you guys don't want to watch me use my scissors and stuff, but I did have one that I wanted to show because I do want to share some tips on the, along the way of how to make, how I like to make this paper cra paper terrain um, and maybe help you along the way if you've never built paper terrain before. Um, but as you can see, this is all the stuff from the sci-fi terrain morning. And this is just the the art side. If you double all of this, you get the blank templates, which we'll get to in a little bit. But yeah, we've got a bit. Um, but I wanted to start with this piece um, to start with, to kind of show off the cutting process. Um, morning, morning, everyone coming in. We're just gonna keep going. We don't, we're just, it's Saturday morning. We got to craft and so, we're just going to start going. This is my ISO dome. This is a little dome that you can build out for your for hydroponics, for some like space station stuff, or a base on a on the on Mars or the Moon or some asteroid out there. You can use this as like a location or a, a cage or you know a force field. You never know. But I'm just going to rough cut everything out from the main sheet and that's that's where i like to use the scissors a lot i know when it comes to crafting a lot of the times you see people pull out their nice straight edge um, and you know get their their ruler and their their exacto knife and um, all the razor blades of the box cutters but i like scissors and i like to do my rough cutting with scissors because I, I, I'm one, feel more like a child as I do this, but also because I can get really big cuts in just a second and trust that they're relatively straight. So these edge pieces, I guess I need to be leaning forward a little bit. Um, so these edge pieces, I just go along and get everything nice and rough cut it out with the scissors. And especially on these tabbies, I could just get a nice clean bit. But even then, like even rough cutting, um, you don't have to worry about it a lot, especially on the tabs. Like if you end up like eh, on one of the tabs, like it's going to be okay. These ones especially, they're just going to be glued under. Um, and I try not to make sure, I try to make sure that there's always enough tab that if you did do that, you still have some space. But once I get the rough cut, out we're going to just start doing the fine work so this is where i'll just go along and 
I'm not even bothering with a ruler. Just cut along the way anything that I need. Uh, when you do get to some fiddly bits, try to find the way that you can do the smaller cuts before you do the bigger cuts because it can sometimes like drag your your knife can sometimes drag along and pull things in weird ways but if you are pulling your cuts into like if you do the small ones and then you pull your big cuts over them you can just clip them off rather than trying to do the big stuff and then do the small stuff afterwards so I like to do small then big cuts so Um, for me, I just go to Walmart and get cardstock. I just went to Wally Mart, uh, went down to the, just the paper supplies and I got 110, um, pound cardstock. Let me see if I can grab. Oh, oh good. So like just literally the most generic cardstock I could find at Walmart, 110 pounds, just basic white. Um, it came in at about eight dollars for six to eight dollars for uh, 150 sheets, which I mean is fantastic. I get all of this. I got all of this for you know 20 pages. So having having a little s supply of cardstock is not a hard thing plus you can pick up your glue and your glue stick and all the other stuff but um copy paper also works it's just not as rigid so it doesn't hold up as well especially if you're putting minis on it um, but i love using copy paper to test things out to kind of pull things along okay real quick here's an example of one so if i do the big cut first okay and then I try to do that. That's what I'm saying is if you do the big cut first and then you try to do the small cut and you pull this out when you um, try to pull on that small one because you've separated the paper, you've lost some leverage and it makes it a little tougher to to make that small refined cut. But if you keep the so here's another one. So but if we keep the small piece uh, if we go, if we cut the small piece first and keep it attached to the large piece, there's a lot more leverage. So then I can just pull along here, whoop, and no issue. So small cuts first, and then in, into big cuts. And well, as well as you don't have to be like super precise. Like I can start way out here and line up my cuts along the way. So. Um, we'll just cut into that. Yeah, but you don't have to be precise with all of these cuts. You can overlap. You can make little snippets. You can make little paper bits. It's part of the fun of it. You're getting a pile of of paper shreds that you're just gonna like shuffle off into your recycling bin. Um, for later so see I did all my small cuts and now I'm doing my big cuts Whoop. and Whoop. all good so now we've got everything trimmed good to go and we've got our piece so I usually do bulk like I do all my cut my rough cutting and then I do my trimming and then I'll do my scoring and I like to just kind of bulk it but for today, we're going to be just moving along because I want to focus on each piece. So if you do have questions um, after getting the kit and you want to like watch me build each individual piece together, I'm going to be trying to do that. So now that we have this, we're going to be just scoring. And this is just a really quick process of following the dotted lines and the different fold lines um, wherever you need. So I'm just going to start with the tabs and I'm just gently dragging uh, my uh, 
my blade over the uh, the pieces. Okay, so I'm gonna have I'm gonna share a little method to my madness here. But like for this particular piece, like I can I want to I don't want to keep rotating my hands around. I want to try to make cut 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 in the same way. Um, so like this piece has different rows that I can follow. So I'm just going to rough, rough, you know, just, I'm not, I don't want to, I'm not, I'm not, I'm rotating the piece. I'm not rotating my angle on my razor blade on my, yeah, my exacto knife. And then I'm going to go back the other way. So I have, I can just do this repetitive pull along it. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing and I'm just going to do, 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 got to do sound effects a little bit. Um, this one's a little tricky cause I don't know exactly what I've done or not. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to really quickly score everything as best I can. Um, do. So, no real rhyme or reason to what's happening. Again, I just, I love paper terrain for the forgiveness of it. Can I pull off my Bob Ross voice? Just, just love the process. Just enjoy yourself along the way. It's okay. It's okay if it's not straight. It's okay if it's a little off or if you duplicate. We're just cruising. Or maybe I want to do like a long continuous cut along all of these lines. There, there. All right. And I'll and if I miss one, I'll know when I get to the folding process because all of a sudden you won't be able to. It it, it will resist a little bit. Because the scoring is you're trying to give yourself uh, a jump start when it comes to folding, especially on small pieces, um, on small folds. So the, fo the scoring helps just align everything. So I think I've got everything, but we'll just make sure. So like it should be able to, when you fold, like you saw that, I just pushed. And so like here, it's you, it gets that nice line just by pushing a little bit but if it if I missed one it won't naturally want to fold and sometimes yes the rough cuts kind of push you off but again this is super forgiving so if things are a little off it's okay you can be as precise or as rough as you want with these so we're just Holding everything down. Uh, do, do, do. Nice. Okay. I'm sorry if my sh my video speed is going. My it's making weird noises at me. But hopefully it's coming back. If there's ever any technical thing, just let me know. Or if you have any questions or if you want to chat about anything, uh, Saturday morning crafting. like, Or if you're just hanging out. If you're just watching your cartoons and you have this in the background, making eggs, bacon, bacon pancakes. Those are really good. Wow. I can really, I, I don't even like, I'm just feeling this. I'm not, I'm barely even like I'm looking at it, but oh man, just got to turn on a, turn on a movie in the background, Renegade. That's what I do. Just have it down on the side, watch a movie in the background, do my work. 
but again, I'm I'm on the computer all the time, so it's like I'll just have it and open it in another tab and just keep going. It's not like I go along in there. Um, it's a good question. Uh, when it comes to copy paper and scoring, there, yes, it's a lot more forgiving. Um. Uh, on the cardstock, but I even score on my copy paper. I just have to be a little bit more gently. the 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 reason why I do do the scoring is because uh, the the scoring gives my, the paper uh, a direction to fold. So I don't like, especially if I'm like manipulating a little bit like this by scoring along that line. It it kind of prompts the the paper to fold in the direction that I want and in the way that I want, rather than like if I were to push this, maybe this would come down with it, or like it would I'd have to like sit here and like pinch this a lot, which I want to keep these nice and flat for the look of it. So scoring just kind of helps along the way. Okay, so I think I've got everything. It feels like I've got everything folded, everything is kind of jumbled up together. Now we're gonna do gluing. Um, and this is this is where I really want to showcase how good rubber cement is for this. You can totally do this with a glue stick, but rubber cement has two properties that make this perfect for paper crafting. Um, the first one is that it is a contact cement. It is a contact glue, which means it's um, it, it wants to adhere to itself. So if you put it, if you put the cement, rubber cement on two sides of the paper, and then when you touch it, it becomes pretty much an instant bond, very similar to, to super glue. The second property is that it is still contact adhesive when dry. Like I don't have a time limit as much. Like obviously you have like a, lo a large amount of time, but um, the the amount of time it takes me to glue all of these, the even if the the glue dries a little bit, it's still going to stick to itself, and that's what makes it really nice for paper terrain. So I'm just kind of rough, adding some a little bit of glue on all these flaps. Um, I'm not. It's okay if it goes a little over onto the white off the flap, like it's okay. So there, okay. So I've added glue to pretty much all of the flaps. Now what I'm gonna do is, like I said, contact is I'm just gonna like blah, blah. Anywhere that I'm seeing um, potential edges that they're gonna meet up with, I'm just putting some rubber cement on. With this one, it's a little harder to see where everything's gonna align, because. but with other pieces, it's really obvious where the, the tabs are gonna go, so you can be a little bit more precise with where you're gluing, but with this one, it's, it's fine. Just putting it along the edges. Um, do you ever do you ever score thinner paper with the back of the blade rather than the sharp side to keep it from cutting too deep? No. One, uh, this is dull probably. Um, it's not as sharp as I probably could have it. I've been using this a ton, so a, a duller one and makes really good scores. Uh, and uh, like, I don't. Uh, the back of the side, the back of it is is tough enough. I I want to see the lines so I know where to follow. Um, it seems like it would still inform your paper the right in preparation for folding without requiring such a practice hand and a gentle touch during the scoring process. Um, yes, you will get better at it. I you know as you get learn as you do this, it you do get you do improve. Um, but I agree. I I think again there there's a lot uh, of forgiveness. No matter what way you do this, it's going to be okay. All right, so now we're gonna glue. And so this is where I now just start pushing and prompting the paper where I want it to go. And you can see there, I just pinched it and it's pretty much done. So I'm gonna just kind of find some 
uh, ways to hold it and just pinch that all in. And I'm just going along. Oh, it looks like I didn't fold that tab. See, that's okay. Fix that. Boop, boop. Pinch, pinch, pinch. Um, we're gonna let's pinch up here in the top, where we still have some access to it. Uh, and one of the, and another thing that I really try with my paper terrain. Um, so if you're trying, if you have my kit, um, and you if you're trying to build it, one thing I try to do is I always leave um, the bottom or a side open because one of the most frustrating parts for me about paper terrain is when um, you get to the last little bit or you get these micro folds um, you get these micro folds and you have no way to like reach in and like slip the tab underneath that thing and then you have no way to pinch on both sides and um, okay I'm just gonna like push that in a little bit it was a little oblong I'm gonna make sure that that's all there and if I need to add a little bit more glue somewhere, I can just like push that in a little bit or open that up and just slide. Blah. That's okay. I don't care. It's going to dry and it'll be fine. Oh, boop, boop. Okay. Well, there you go. Uh, Oh, the back of the blade on uh, on the printed side. Um, let's try it. I've I've never I've never done it, but we can try it. Um, this this particular blade is is roundy, so we'll see. But there you go. Our isodome, all ready to go, and this makes great uh, surprise. Um, so like you have your your monster here. Boop. Ta-da! There's enemies coming into the room. So, here we go. One little isodome. Now let's grab another piece. Let's do something easy, like a door, and let's try try what Chris is saying. So, already on the process, let's take the back. And we'll use the back of the knife this time. Okay. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah. Could definitely, you know. Could work. Um, I'm noticing a little bit of tug on it. Like it doesn't, uh, it still wants to pull up on this side of things. Um, but it does prompt it forward. So yeah, could totally work. So now let's, uh, let's just do a couple of these doors. And we'll get the doors out of the way. The doors are super easy. They're, they're, Three little scores. Um, where's another door? Here you are. Oop. So I'm just gonna bulk score all these. Okay. Fold, 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 fold. Yep. Just cruising. Okay. So we've got our scoring and folding. And then what I'll do is I'll just get it globs of glue on this. And then... Rah, set aside. And I don't have to re-dip every time. Like I'm just, I'm just going... Use one side of the brush and then the other side. Doop. Uh, let's let's try scatter terrain. So, um, so we've got our our doors. Let's just pinch them together. Okay, and there's a little door, all ready to go with its little base. And then you can end up what you can do here. So let's see, as you can slide the, one of the tabs underneath here, so then it's holding everything there. And there's the door. Oh, nice. There's the door to the isopod, isodome. So, do. So I'm 
just push I'm just pushing that together oh get out of there paper I don't want you in there okay see and then this like this is what I'm saying though so I just pinch that but it's a little off so I can pull it off and then repinch it down and we're good to go it's very forgiving and now we've got four doors four little sci-fi doors we can use in our spaceship um, or whatever uh, anything that we need all right hey good Kevin like come build along build along all right so renegade wants to know do we have scatter terrain as well let's see if we can find some scatter terrain well we've got cement barricades um, we've got little barrels um, we've got I've got a large console uh, where's my little crates and boxes I've got a case um, let's I know there's little boxes somewhere oh did you just how dare you drop onto the floor little barrel I'll get that in a minute oh uh, there's another little console where are my boxes so many oh here you are my... okay let's do a couple of these let's put the console we'll wait for those um, I'll just do sets of these. So let's start with the cement barricade. We're just going to score all of that. I'll do the boxes. This is the large crate. This is the little box. Did we lose this? Did we lose the stream for a second? If we did, I apologize. Oh, nice, nice. I, I will get when we get to the right reactor. That was one I was definitely thinking of of uh, warp shell and last flight of the red sword. So I wanted to make sure to have something something that could work really well for the like the finale of of last flight. When I built, when I made these, so we're just. Okay. Okay, so we've got some scatter terrain, and I've got duplicates of all of these, so we'll be able to make a few more in a little bit. But let's make sure that we get at least everything, uh, a chance to view all of the different pieces. Okay, so so this cement barricade um, could be used for some nice cover. You could use it as kind of like an impromptu little half barrier wall. We've got boxes that you could pile up in the corner uh, if you need some loot supplies to grab, um, with some explosive crates, stuff to explore. So jute, jute. And again, I'd like, I saw a comment um, the other day. It's just like, it's crazy how quickly all of this stuff comes together. And this is why I, I'm just, I'll give you all the reasons why I like paper terrain is because I can do all of this in, in just a little bit of time and have pieces um, that I could, that work for my table, that work for what I want. Um, an infinity war table. I'm not familiar with that. You want to explain that one to me? Is that for war gaming? Um, S 
So while while Renegade's explaining what an infinity war table is to me, um, yes, the eight eight and a half letter size is a constraint when designing uh, larger structures. Um, I do my very best. Oh, okay, well, like yeah, it is war gaming. I'm I'm hoping to have some stuff um, with uh, some stuff ready for Warmaker when it comes out, and um, I'm working with I'm working with JD. Uh, JD on Epic Sloth over on Discord. Uh, he's he's helping me work out something for like Kill Squad. I want to I want to make make a Kill Squad set so that you can walk up to the table and drop down some paper terrain for Kill Squad and get playing. Um, I have done I have done the Witch's Hut in the free Quick Start Guide is a two page two page build. Um, it takes two pages to print out the walls um, for for that. So I have experimented with it. With it, I am actively studying out how to be more efficient with my two-page designs. Um, it's definitely you know leaning towards boxes and and this these cubes make it a lot easier, but. Um, I, I have I have a few ideas on how to do certain things. Um, like I have I have an idea, a clever idea for how to facilitate the Ghost Mountain um, Wild West town uh, without having to design every uh, every building individually. I, I will have a couple variations, but I have a clever thought on how to how to do do that so more to come on a larger scale hopefully as we move along and so we've glued everything so as we come back I'm just gonna little put a little glue on the bottom of each of these no don't touchy no touchy each other no stay away we must all be separated until you're ready Oop. See, like with this crate, I know exactly where the tabs are going, so I can be a little bit more specific on where the tab, where the back, the glue on the back of the page is going. So, like here, whoop. So, doo -doo -doo. Okay, and then the last one is this box here. Doo -doo. Okay. So this is this is a few pieces of scatter terrain. Let's see if we can put these all nice together. Let's start with the barrel before my fingers get a little gluey. Um, so let's make sure you guys can see this. Uh, again, this is why I want access to all of this because this is really finicky stuff. But a nice little pinch while I have access to it. Gives me a good shot at gluing all this together. And it's okay if it's a little off. It's gonna be okay. Concentrate, Kane, concentrate. I don't want to. I just want a barrel. Okay. Oh, you, you're not wanting to play nice, this little tabby. I must have missed it. That's okay. Look, get away, gobby. Whoop. Just slide thing in there and then pinch. Okay, play nice. See, these little, this is the, this is where we've entered into fiddly. We've entered into fiddly land. But what I can do. In the meantime is I can find like a pen and I can just like get this down and I can use the pen to just push down on the different tabs while it's drying and then I can flip it over and push down on the side of that tab there oh I'm, I was pushing on the wrong flap so the smaller you go with this stuff, the more fiddly it's going to be, but you just have to kind of let the glue do its work. 
And if I was having a real issue with this one, for example, well, maybe I can make this into a feature. Boop. This barrel's been opened. Whatever is inside has gotten out. The, the, the goo in the inside, what is it? I don't know. It seems like something was crawling around in there. Scratch marks and everything. All right. There's that. So if that doesn't want to stay down, just make that a feature or add a little bit more glue um, and just move along. It's okay. That's a lot of glue, so scrape off a ton of that. And then let's just see if that goes there. If not, we're just going to have an open, open canister for something. Okay, so these other pieces. Okay, cement barricade. Nice, nice and easy to sit in there. Uh, let's do this crate next. Box, box. Nice crate. Okay. Now we got, this is our little, this is our small console that we're putting together. So it's, boop, boop. Okay. And now we have a little console with a little keyboard. Where's my little, uh, here's my, my barred mini. You can just walks up to the computer, go boop, boop, boop. Good morning, Al. Hal. Good morning. Okay, so there's that. Here's a little case. Maybe he has some uh, weapons or some ammunition or the uh, the bomb you have to defuse or the bomb you have to set. And you can just you know set that right next to the crate. Or the pilot crates, you can set them on top, and if something starts coming undone, you just go back and pinch it a little bit more. Doot, doot. And then we'll do a little box. This one definitely has the uh, the unobtainium element or MacGuffin inside that you're transporting across the galaxy. Got to keep it cold and stasis. It can't be away from the ship for too long, or else. The battery will die and okay, look great, dude. Little box, and now we've got some scattered terrain, just little crates and boxes, which are perfect for the cargo, cargo hold full of loot. All right, let's uh let's do a little console. We're just gonna modify this one a little bit with a screen. So let me see if I can find. Oh, here you are. Boop. Okay, this is this is a small screen. So there's a couple different ways we can do this. I can put it like this and just have it hovering back. I can, you know, have it a little higher and so, you know, do there. Or another uh, way that you could do this is I'm gonna be a little bold now that I've made this. And I'm just going to cut into the top of this console. And I'm actually gonna cut in two places to try different things. So I'm just cutting on the top of the, the top surface, as well as right there. So you can just have this, and now if you want, you can, oop, it looks like I didn't cut that one big enough. Boop. Got our little 
little console here, or if you cut it in a different place, like just here on the edge, see where did you go? You know, it just adjusts where it's sat. So now we have a little console with a screen that our players can come and explore and interact with. Space slot machine, that's perfect. Okay, you can set it outside outside the isopod the isodome and they have to enter the key code before they can access the iso isodome access denied the key is in the medical bay all that sweet stuff uh, and then you can do the same thing with uh i have uh larger consoles so eventually we can have you know two screens you could have like we can end up having something like with this um, it'd actually be more, you know, like that, or we have some large screens as well. Oh, here it is that you can adjust and connect to. So let's do a set of consoles and screens real quick. I want another small console. Here you go. Okay, so I'm just gonna score all of this stuff. Um, where is, that's a small one, I have a medium one. I need to find my medium console. Oh, I missed, I missed that one, okay. Do, do, do. Okay, oh, here you are, medium console. Folding. Well, thanks again for everybody tuning in. I'm um, just watching, joining me for the Saturday morning crafting. I hope this is helpful, especially if you did pick up the this the sci-fi set over on my uh, my coffee my coffee. I don't know how to pronounce it. I say coffee. Some people say coffee. Uh, whatever. But um, yeah, if you picked them up, I hope this is helpful. I. I want these all to be super easy to uh, to build and to implement in your table. Um, they are also fantastic little crafts for kiddos. I've been using some of these for um, coloring uh, with my kid. Uh, I've also we've we've done some little mini storytelling sessions as she builds out the. Uh, the layout of the of the room and it's mostly just ends up being a pile of stuff but it's still fun because then we then we end up grabbing our our booger he's our i have a one i have a little ogre mini she always wants to have the booger in the game um and then she grabs like a valkyrie or 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 some vikings and she wants to tell the story about oh we're gonna go on this drive over here or we're gonna explore over here and so if you have littles you want to you want to introduce these paper terrain makes really good and if you also have littles um, if they end up getting a hold of the scissors coming in and s cutting something up like um, like that which has happened to me that's okay I don't care it's just a piece of paper and I can print off more like. So on that one, yes, all of my sets, all of my sets come with blank templates of all the shapes. Um, so I know I'm going to get to those in just a, in, in, in just a little bit, but all of all of the sets, every shape that I've made has a blank version um, that you can that you can doodle on. Let's see, did I? It looks like I finished schooling all these. Okay, so so yeah, so doodle your own combining pieces. That's the name of the game here when it comes to the creative space. So and I'm, I mean, I wanted I wanted to show you that in just a second how to, how I how I would consider uh, combining some of these pieces in new and interesting ways. 
Sorry, I need to realize that I need to do this under the camera because you guys want to see it as I do it, as I put glue on paper. That's what we're here for, tuning in and crafting together. Okay, so there's a little cons another little console. Um, okay, so we'll put that aside and let's finish with the Let's go on to the medium console. Okay, medium console and the big console. And you can see, again, I'm, again, I, let me, sorry guys, I keep pulling this towards me so I can see it, but, uh, I'm not being super precise here. It's going to be okay if they're a little off. The, I, I try to make sure the black, the black and white helps a ton in hiding little discrepancies and the rough art helps make it so that your mind isn't like staring at it going like that's slightly off. Of course it's off. It's a doodle, but no one cares. Everyone's going to look at the table and it's like, oh, that's a console. Okay. Are the wires three dimensional? No, that's okay. Okay, so let's combine a few pieces. So like I was saying, you can now have this one here. I'm just gonna slather a little bit more glue than I actually want. So I'm just gonna brush off some of that. And then I'm gonna brush the back. Um, okay, and then um, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just gonna brush the back. Um, and then I'm actually, so watch, I'm going to brush the back here. I'm going to brush the back here. Okay. I'm going to be crazy. I'm going to be crazy for a second. Okay. So big one comes in. Now I have a huge computer monitor, huge console with navigational charts. Um, I know. So, 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 so true. But here you go. Like, Awesome. Now you can like you can set these up and you've got a little corner office computer console space. Um, you can set it next to some boxes or or whatever. Um, or you can oh, I need to put some glue on this side. There. And I'm gonna actually do a little bit right there too. Because what I want to do is Take this, set this just right here. And then what I want to do is I'm going I'm to cut into this again. And I just cut over my art. It's okay. It's... I'm not going to get offended if you customize my the pieces. So don't worry about it. Just cut into the cut into the page. Okay. So now look how cool that is. Like a two monitor, a dual monitor stuff going on here. Now the thing is is I've I've got this here underneath. So either I can like try to fold that a little bit. And I can even just snip snip. It's fine. And glue that to the bottom and now I've got it a little squampus and I can I can fold this a little bit more and get some I can play with the angles to get what I want and like if I really wanted to okay so now I've got this and Oh no, what, who broke the monitor? Like so, what happened in this room that shattered the monitor? Like, there you go. Like I, I got a little broken monitor there. Something's going on. The, uh, the everything smashed. If I want to, to doodle a little bit more, I can add in.
broken. Something's gone down in the, in the room. So you can manipulate them that way. Or like I was saying here, I've got two pieces. I'm just going to glue them back to back a little bit. I guess I was a little off on my, I got a little too ahead of myself. Okay. But now instead of just a square module, I've got this. And I could even, I could do the same thing where I can put my pieces together like that. I can put my pieces together like that. I can put multiple of these and now I've got a whole row of these leading out into this nice long kind of half cylinder. Computers along the way. Like this is where you can get really creative with all these little pieces. I could lay this on the side and now it's a, it's a base for something that I can set on top of. So just a few ways to do that. Or oh, my favorite, one of my favorites is um, like get a red Sharpie. Okay. And just add a blinking red dot, a red button there. Or all of a sudden this is, this AI is active or the warning there. Or I can even do something like incoming like you can you can manipulate these along the way and showcase different ways to uh, add to your story there okay? or even like let's do it's gruesome but Make them bloody if you want. Something happened. Okay. So on the fly, at the table, whatever you need. All right. Let's, um, I want to do, let's see. We've been going for almost an hour. We're still doing good. Um, I want to do a few of the bigger pieces. And I want to showcase probably the most difficult piece um, there. So let's, I want to do, I want to show you these risers first. These are really simple. Okay, so I've got different sized risers like, um, let's see if I can find like a half step or a full step or a two step um, and then like a 1.5 step. Okay, but I want to show you a couple, a really cool thing that you can do with these ones. And I'm going to do go with these two. Uh, that one, go with that one. Okay. And why I call them risers. Okay. Okay. Do, do, do. Okay. Oh, it's just okay. So what I tried to do with these ones, it's going to blow your mind. Too. Okay, it's so after we get them all built and folded. All right, got some glue down. Is I wanted verticality in my games. I love verticality. I love when uh, a GM or players can take advantage of height, um, or if monsters take advantage of height, um, changing the dy dy dynamics a little bit so that it's up and down, not just over there and you know over here. Like even if you go under, like that's also a really fun space. So. Adding verticality to your rooms is a great way to um, create some dynamicness that that just adds really simply 
because um, then you can create spaces where monsters or enemies are higher than you and you're down below so you don't have the 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 high ground advantage and so these these risers are meant to just create little platforms um, for them but I call them risers because what you can do is I'm gonna put this together okay what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this to come on are you meant to go the other way around or you're just not folding the way that I want you to there you go good job okay see that see that crazy crazy eh so now you've got a riser that literally, you know, you can put your, your person on and now there's a bridge across, or if you need something a little bit lower, you push it down. Now it's a little lower or it's a little higher. Now, obviously the other way around this is you can just stack them, which is fine. But again, how cool is that to just be able to just, Boop. And now it's a little shorter. Um, and so this makes it really great for um, spaces where you need a ramp or something and you want to have different things. So we have, for example, our catwalk, which I'll make real quick for you guys. And that you're, the, int the part that uh, you might be wondering is why is there two of them? Why is there, why, is, like, why, is, why are they duplicated? And it's because bridges in particular, I wanted to be extra rigid. So you'll see in a second how strong it is when you have this dual sided um, bridge going on. And they're just like super easy to make. Okay, so we got that going. We need to fold this one. We need to fold this one. Doop. Okay, and then we'll fold the tabbies. Do you ever think cra crafting dungeon terrain would just be like manhandling a sheet of paper so you can get a bridge? I watch, you know, you watch other terrain being built and it's like, you know, Spin this wire together and snip this this uh, this popsicle stick and glue them together and it is awesome, but it's so precise and it's so cool what people can make. But I am super proud of how this stuff comes together in a way that jives with my total lack of precision. I am a broad strokes. I work in broad strokes. So here's that. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I've got my bridge glued. Um, and then what I'm going to do is it's going to come together like this and just flat and everything down. Okay. And then what you do is you fold both of these up on itself. You fold both of these up on itself. Boop. Okay, and now you have a catwalk. And I love JD did this the other day, and I just was so happy. Just, I'm not afraid to cut this terrain. I don't care, and it's fine. OK, 
Okay, so now we've got little spaces for it. And what's really fun about the ca this catwalk is you can either treat it as a bridge, so we can, let's pull apart our risers. And so we can set this out and we can use these tabs to either glue them together or kind of line up spacing there. So now I've got a nice little bridge and it's a ramp, okay? Or if I need, I can flip these down and I can set these up. And now there's just a little ledge that people can walk on, great for sewers. So you have the river down here and this is the side, the, the walk there, the catwalk. Um, or you can have like a full ramp. And it's hard to see them vertically, but you got that. Um, but again, having that verticality lets you have players that move up to here while they all have enemies down here or vice versa. And then you can have players who are, you know, dangling from the side, but side while the cult is there and they fall down. And so you, you really start getting to some fun playtime there as you work into your different scenes. You walk over, you're, you kind of sneak out onto the catwalk over top the console room and you watch them as they're making their final plans and they see them, you see them indicate where the, where the special button is, it's going to launch the death weapon or whatever. And so you sneak down after they walk away and you're like, oh, I got to dis, someone, we got to disarm this thing. Da -da. So really get into took some fun craft time. Okay. So we've got most everything built out so far. There's a few more things. There's a shipping container. I'll save that for a little bit. It's just another large, you know, shipping container that you can use great for platforming, great for building up using the crates and the boxes to again, build that verticality there. Um, the next one that I want to build is the, the reactor tower. So we've got three different variations that I have art wise. I've got, we've got a cryopod, I've got a reactor and I've got a bubble tank. So we're just going to make those real fast. Where'd you go? There you go. Okay. And if you guys have any questions or things you want me to talk about for a second, I totally happen to gib and gab while I do this. But again, I just appreciate everyone tuning in, uh, whether you're watching this live or if you're watching this in the future after picking it up. Um, again, I, I, I really hope this paper terrain can just add to your game a little bit more, um, give you some opportunities to be creative and give you some opportunities to just showcase some uh some diy spirit with uh whatever you're doing i know all of us are you know a lot of us have a lot of things going on in our spaces we're planning on next game games um the yog crystal is on my mind i am i am it is an active work in progress um trying to define the right shape so that the uh the crystal doesn't become fiddly is the ultimate question for me right now. How do I make it so that I can create the crystal without the, uh, the fit, the process becoming fiddly? Cause that ultimately is the decide, you know, that's the deciding factor of whether or not, um, I push forward with a particular design is if I can do what I'm doing right now, which is without much hassle, put it together and go. If I have to spend a lot of time and a lot of consternation to get something together, it's it's not to me is not worth uh, what I'm trying to do. Uh, at that point, I would rather build out foam terrain and get the the enable that precision than try to force paper terrain, which I believe is meant to be fast and easy and simple and uh, streamlined non-frustrating um yeah uh 
Using typical 28 uh, mil millimeter minis on non-textured paper surfaces, you'll have to find that the coefficient of friction is over. Which greater than... It's true, true. Ramps, ramps and little minis don't work. So if you need to go like stairways, uh, using the crates, the boxes, the risers to create steps is more effective than creating a really steep ranch, uh, ramp. So let me... So we're going to glue these. Yeah, definitely. Like, I do want the crystal to uh, to look like a crystal. I try to always like, even though I'm using basic shapes, I do want me to. I do want to get a semblance of the same thing. Like, the last thing I want is to make everything a square and be like, this is this, and this is another square, and this is another square. So then your your whole table becomes really blocky. The uh, I really like. If you can, if we can manage having a variety of different shapes, even though they are still basic geometric shapes, um, they can uh, they they add they add to that overall pop, that overall feel, uh, and you kind of forgive the uh, the blockiness a little bit. All right, we're going, we're cruising, we're cruising. Do, do, do. We're just putting that back glue on. All right. Let's put these together. Okay. Okay, so here is the first tower and again they're they're all using the same shapes but you can design them slightly differently to get different effects okay so we're going to do after this one i got a few more shapes to build and then we'll call it a day uh, or call it a morning so here is, is my reactor tower um hard to hard to get you know, I repeated it so that if you if you're like looking through glass, you're looking. It's meant to be like a single thing, but cool nonetheless. Kind of have to do what you got to do. But next one is the cryopod, that strange survivor or traveler through deep space, locked in a cryostasis, waiting, unaware of how long it's been since they entered the the deep freeze and you have to go rescue them or you unwittingly release what should have been frozen for a long time from a distant planet the froze and launched into space never to be found again yet you found him and have released onto an unwitting universe after a thousand years Oop campaign seed right there someone run with it i want to hear about it maybe i'll do it i don't know okay again rough i can trying to be fast which is good to showcase that this still works but ultimately if i had more patience i could get this real nice but it's saturday morning who has patience on Saturday morning? I've been awake since five. And even then I didn't go to bed until like one. What was I thinking? Oh, again, sorry guys, I keep like pulling it off screen. I just start talking and I bring it closer and closer and closer to my eyes and it's just like, I need to stare into this as pieces soul as I glue it together all right so we've got our bubble tank which you can climb into and do whatever um, we've got our cryopod with our frozen survivor and the reactor and then what you do is you can either set that on their own or there's in this pile is a special piece where are you You're one of the bigger pieces, so why are you so difficult to find? 
Oh wait, it's because I have a giant pile of stuff. <laughs> Here we go. Our console base. Okay. Well, hold on, hold your hold, hold on. You're gonna see this. Okay. Do do do. Okay. So we've done that one. Got all that to cut that we need. That done. That done. Almost there. I think uh, there's there's plans for a lot of stuff. I, I'm always open to ideas or requests. I again I I make I never make guarantees on when or how I will respond to a request um, or if I will like there's no promises but I'm always open to them so a uh, corrupted buildings all that stuff but the other part about this is that no matter what I could do in the meantime I want to ensure that everyone feels enabled to adjust these however they want, similar to how we've been doing it. If you if you want to make these corrupted, then either one, grab a blank template and we can start doodling what we need, or two, take what I have, print them out, and then like we saw, grab a Sharpie and start uh, adding details that make it feel like um, it's a corrupted alien piece. And I'll, I'll show you that in just a second. So all around here, real quick, and then right there. And then we just need to do little bits along these edges here. Okay. So real quick, we'll just build, this is our console base. So this is a, a circular console or, or a collection of consoles wrapping around a central tower. Um, or platform or whatever. So I can just pinch all those together. Okay. And then we'll pinch these down. Come on, stay. Pinch. Nope, you don't want to play nice. I'll get some glue on you in a minute. You can't serve, you can't escape forever. Okay. Boom. Console tower. Okay. So we've got our little circular console. And now what you can do is either, so I added these little tabbies. So you can either glue them and then just glue it straight down. Or you can cut little slots on either one of these so that you can slide that in and glue it from underneath. So then you add have the tabs sticking out under here, and then you glue the bottoms, and now it's really solid. Or you can leave them freestanding, because now what you can do is you have this console tower with a reactor cryopod, or you have a reactor tower, or you have a, a, a bubble back to tank, or, or whatever you need. So you can boop, 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 and then you can slide other consoles up alongside it. You can have other things built out there, or you can have a long, a long console sitting nearby, and you can then even, um, let's see, where are you? Let me get a piece of paper. Oh, well, let's just, let's just use one of these. What you can do here is, Okay, so I've just drawn some wires. Index card method, incoming doop. Okay, and that's just the back of another console, or that's just the back of another console. And so now 
Loop. I can add a little detail that these there's wires going from this little thing um, and now they can have an opportunity to interact with those wires or I can add to the scene there I could have you know dangling wires you know off the side and do whatever I need so you can use these paper stuffs to do all sorts of things this is stacked in storage someone just like left them but then it's piled up a bunch of boxes or crates around it so what's it doing in the storage area so there okay so there's that so two more things two more things we're going to do the satellite dish get out of here gets um, the satellite dish this is the toughest um piece i feel like in the whole um whole set and i wanted to, to show it a little bit more in detail um how how i would how i put this together this i actually i made this piece as part of uh, inktober last year and it was before i had figured out my whole process um of like prototyping and everything I, I i built oh there it is i did a big cut before a small cut tis tis cane um yeah i i did it before i made the whole process of prototyping and so i built this just on the fly with what i thought would work i was building out in affinity photo um with with my tool with you know just with shapes um, trying to manipulate the, the basic shapes of what I could, you know, imagine. And so this piece is super cool, and it's a great set piece. But uh, it, it can be the most difficult. So I want to just do this for you real quick. So this is, um, I, this is the satellite dish itself. I'm just cutting out and then we're gonna have a base we're gonna have a tower we're gonna have an attachment unit um, and then we're gonna have a the satellite dish pokey thing the you know the thing that sits inside the satellite dish so we're gonna just cut all this stuff out Yeah, I love it. To step on some wires, take some damage. Great use of it. And something that you can just quickly throw down on the table. Do you guys like the ever-growing pile of paper um, that we're just ending up with? So now we've got, this is the console. This is the base of the tower. So you can see it's, it's, it's the exact same shape that I made, but I actually shrunk it slightly. So it's just like the same shape just miniaturized like by you know it's like 80 percent um there don't get tech what you would uh what are you saying chris don't get technical with you that's about as technical as i'm like i'm uh, able to get with you <laughs> you can out technical me any day of the week just your Phrase on friction, that's a word I don't use very often. Friction. The stickiness. Hey, that's a rough thing. I don't, I don't have to worry about. Look, I tell my daughter when we're stepping out on the ice, it's like, look, just make sure you're stepping on crunchy stuff. If it's crunching, you're probably okay. Crunchy snow, good. No crunchy, it's probably slick. You might fall. I don't got time for friction. I have fallen on ice my fair share. I spent some time in Canada and I have I have I have felt the pain of the sudden betrayal of your legs falling out from underneath you and the sudden pain of absolute like dis like back shattering destruction. It's just, you just just collapse on a block of ice that was hidden in the sidewalk or on the in the parking lot. 
is. So, I don't got time for no slick ice. If I do have time for slick ice, it's playing, when I'm playing hockey. Played hockey growing up. Haven't played for a couple years now, but yes, ice is hard. Ice is hard. I'd rather get checked into the sideboards than get checked in open ice and fall flat on my back on the ice. Like, at least the walls are cushions. Nope. Okay, come on. Oh, that was silly of me. I did a big, I did small cuts. I did a big cut and then a small cut. Do, do, do. Oh, darn it. That's what I get. Yep. Big, I did a small cut after a big cut. Don't do that. All right, last one. And then, uh, where is, oh, that's a good point. I do need to find the, the pokey bit. <laughs> gonna need that in a second um, it's probably in this pile of stuff that fell out let's see if I can find it real quick oh that's that's one of the big consternation pieces that I wanted to make sure we addressed is that pokey bit I only have I only printed a single one so somewhere in this pile. Oh, there it is. Ha ha. Uh -huh. I found it. The pokey bit. Okay, let's go with Okay, we're almost a bit small cut. Big cut. Okay, two. And please, if you guys do make anything from this stuff, send me pictures. Jump on Discord, send, drop, drop me a quick snap of your scene, whether you used it in a game or not. I would love to see how you guys are using these pieces. I'd love to see how you're building them and how you're putting them together in creative ways. Uh, for your games and what you used them for. I think that would be super awesome. Okay, we've got all of our pieces. We're gonna quickly score and fold everything. Um, and just another couple minutes, we're gonna go fast. We got things to do on Saturday, but first and foremost, we got things to craft and that's what we've been doing all morning. So, hope you've had a fun time tuning in. Again, I appreciate everyone hanging out with me for almost an hour and a half it's like a movie i watched uh as i was cutting out all these pieces we watched jurassic park the lost world that you know number two uh, that was great great i love the jurassic park series jurassic world was okay the two and three i was disappointed with overall not enough dinosaurs not enough dinosaur you know um, going on for me, especially the third one. I came to watch a dinosaur film and then I watched a, you know, activist film about bugs eating crops. It's like, I came for dinosaurs. Anyways, that's my rant. That's my rant for this morning. Other rants. Um, if you want to know my, how I watch movies is, um, if I'm being extra critical, but like a lot of times I'll watch movies and I, I don't care. I'm just watching the movie. Um, I do like to analyze them a little bit because I, I find their, how they're made fascinating and I appreciate the art of them. Um, but uh, one of my favorite criterias for watching a movie is if there is ever um, an I'm out moment. That's what I call them. It's, it's, it's a moment in a movie that you just you have lost you've the movie completely lost me like it it's not just like i'm confused it's more like i can't believe you went there i i have now fixated so much on this thing that i'm out i, I you can't bring me back into this movie i don't i don't care what else the rest of the movie's going on like i, I i'm out mentally i'm out i i might even turn it off i i might walk away it's it like i have my brain has left the movie 
has left the theater. That's my I'm out moment. Biggest I'm out moment was watching Frozen, which is not necessarily allowed in my house. It's not that it's not allowed. It's just that I'm not going to turn it on. Uh, but it's when you have this movie and they're singing the song and they say, I finish each other's sandwiches. It has haunted me for years and I completely lost it with that movie. It was like any movie that says finish each other's sandwiches has lost all credibility with me. It's like, come on, that's where you went. I love sandwiches as much as the next guy, even sometimes even more, but really, really? Anyways, anyways, didn't think you'd hear that today on the stream. <laughs> so true. So true. I'm, I am deep in cartoon Disneyland, but then again, I've never really left cartoon land. I love, I love me some good cartoons. Love me some good, uh, animated films. So there are some of my favorite. All right. We're almost there. Almost there. Thank you for your patience as we build out this multi-piece. Oh, this, here you go. So speaking of multi-piece stuff, this is where you can get really complex with your your paper terrain, building out these pieces, um, having them be a full kind of set piece in and of itself as you combine everything to create one giant piece. Yeah, yeah, the opening, the ending, the beginning, the middle, all of it, all of it is a big I'm out moment for episode eight, but we won't get there. That's a, that's a hot one. That's a, it's a hot take. I don't know if I'm prepared for. Okay. So we've got all our pieces. Let's start putting them together. I'm actually going to start with the pointy bit. Okay. Um, after gluing everything. I'm going to start there because with the satellite, um, because of the nature of how I built a few of these pieces, I broke my rule and a few of these are enclosed um, as well as I'm gluing them in places that they need more um, physical like contact points in order to be really effective. So I'm just going to glue these up here real quick um, and we'll be able to get going taking advantage of that contact cement plenty of dry time and still sticky almost out of glue good thing I have another one okay all right um, put this here There, put that there. Okay, I think I've got do everything good. We'll we'll work from there. Okay, so this is where it's going to get a little tricky, right? As I put my the po the pokey bit here, um, I'm going to get this nice and snug, and then I'm going to make sure that the bottom bits here have not like a ton of glue. I don't like that, but enough glue. And then I'm going to make sure that before I fold everything, this gets a glob right in the center. So satellite dish, um, and the pointy bit, and I'm going to make sure that that just gets in there and I'm just going to hold it for a second. Okay. And again, I don't have a ton of, space here so i'm trying to do that but it might not work so what you can do instead is grab a little scrap of paper if that's not going to work and then you're going to just do the same thing it's just you've got it built you're going to get a scrap of paper try to do try to glue that on and cap it off it's going to take some time because of the, uh, the rubber cement takes a minute to, to glue or better yet. See, again, this is where the frustrating part is. Do I have the patience to do what I need to do or to keep it locked in place? Um, because I can also like try to cut through it, if 
but I'm just going to try to just hold it. I think let's just let's just be patient for a second. Just long enough. Just long enough for the glue to come tacky and then we can hopefully hold on to it. Hopefully, I'm hoping to redesign this at some point, but I wanted to make sure everyone had access to the satellite dish when we got there. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that alone for a minute. We're gonna finish the other pieces. Okay, so here's the base. Um, sure. It's a it's a lot of um, I could do a stream on how I design it. It's it's a lot of just playing around. Um, yes, you could do masking tape or things like that. Um, but yeah, with designing this stuff is uh, is not nearly as um, like methodical as you might think. It's a lot of just playing around um, with stuff. Again, this is this is a this is the console piece that I I broke the rule on. I, I designed it to be enclosed, and so you could definitely just like replace this piece with um, one of the other ones. Again, sorry guys, I keep pulling it out of, out of shot. See how see how like this is what I'm talking about when it comes to if you enclose your paper terrain like. Trying to finagle everything and not crush the piece is the part that becomes the most concerning and fiddly, and it makes me mad. So I'm just gonna try to get that roughly pinned and leave it like that. And then this is the attachment piece. Um, again, broke my rule. I hadn't, I, well, I hadn't established my rules during Inktober when I built all these. So you just you kind of try to fold them all into shape together. So did I break it or not? I don't know. But yeah, so it's just trying to get that nice and there. Oh, did I not glue this backside well enough? Okay. So again, we're just pinching this together. Okay, well, I think we're gonna get a workable thing out of that for a minute, just for a minute. Oh, no, you liar, trickster. Okay, just just relax. Just chill there. Please. No. Please. No. <laughs> Again, this uh, we've entered fitly. So, okay, there. Stay. Okay, this is this is where and now so we're in the satellite dish portion and we're going to be trying to actually make this so that it sticks out so we're going to make sure that as we're pushing this together that we're not bending them down like the console bases we're bending them up into a dish okay so then if you can get it so everything plays nice. Add a little bit more glue there and there. That's a lot of glue. That's like... Okay. Let's hope this works. I have a bad feeling about it. All right. Oh, you. You dirty rat. You dirty rat, Lux. Using the force. There. Okay, and the last piece is... Okay. Let's get 
get this glued together. Did I even glue this? <laughs> Told you. I'm like I shared I should have I should have just kept this to myself. But then again, you guys wouldn't have had I know the satellite dish was one of the favorites in Inktober when I released when I shared it. So I had I knew I had to share it. But now, if anything, this becomes a lesson to all of you on the the consternations of paper terrain and makes you appreciate all the simpler pieces. Okay, so we've got this going, okay? So there's that. We're going to use this there. And so now we're going to just glue this to this. Boop. Stay. And then we're going to glue this to this. Combining pieces. So now... Okay, and now you can you can find a way to you know glue the glues down. But yeah, is this the, my best work? Absolutely not. Is it super cool when it comes together? Absolutely. So hopefully that helps as you guys work through it. Again, I'll probably redesign this and share a free version coming up soon on Kofi, so anybody could get a replacement. But for now, like it's pretty cool when you have this on the. Uh, you can set this down on the table and you've got this satellite dish that makes for a great uh, key element point for uh, like war, war gaming or something in like Xeno Dead Zone. You've got to realign everything, especially like this one. It's off. we got to realign it. Get the glue. Get the masking tape. Put a, point, uh, a couple hearts of effort into that. I think I've done like three hearts worth of effort putting that together. Uh, and it's still, uh, still got a ways to go. Okay. So last up um, is the blank terrain um, let's do just a really straightforward one um, let's find so with all of these blank terrains what I like to do is I cut them out rough um, but I don't trim them yet and so what I can end up doing is let's let's just do a little box I'm just going to showcase how how this ends up where I think you guys can get the picture but um, let's think of something we could use a box, a little box for. Um, maybe this is a neutron. It's the, the core of a neutron star. Um, oh, if you want things to collapse in battle, like, let me show you what you do if you want things to collapse in battle. It collapsed. It broke in now. You destroyed it. Ah, no one's repairing that anymore. <laughs> it's a, another benefit of paper terrain is, is that it's destructible. Um, little commitment to it. Um, so anyways, all right, so let's make a little neutron star container. Someone has a little container this has got like masses of energy from around it all that stuff I'll do the same for we'll keep we'll just have like a little window there so we'll just do like a little angled window here and so what I like to do is um, I keep these uncut so that I can draw over everything if I go over the edge it's it kind of fills in the gaps okay but uh, if you're using a sharpie though like you do have to kind of like memorize where the lines are I've covered up some of this the cutting spaces um, so so you kind of just have to know where you're going to score and cut. But really quickly, I can design this and I can do a little, you know, fill in the tabs there. And then I can draw um, a little like keyboard here and then like a dial. Ooh, 
and buttons and then we can do like a label with like a warning um, or you know I don't like that I'll just do another one and then we'll do a little writing and then we'll do another kind of like there box there and then we'll do a, a key that kind of like slidey thing all right and then you just kind of like fill in some of the edges overall real rough but as you just doodle along you can end up with a piece it's all nice and custom for you so we can just draw it that's there there okay uh, scissors I like my scissors better snip it's all good so uh, no I did not use a sharpie I I drew them on my iPad I just um, little cut I so I'll, I'll eventually do a stream where I showcase this but what it, the general process is I go into blender um, I import a little 28 millimeter Ranger just as my scale model and then I start building out uh, shapes just building out shapes and sizing it and comparing it to what I want um, until I have like an idea for it um, that's going to work. I'm not trying to make it 3D accurate. I'm trying to make it for paper terrain. So blocky shapes, geometric shapes, all that uh, work out really well. And then what I do is when I'm ready, I uh, export the Blender shapes into a file, a, a program called Unfolder. I know there's ext extensions out there for Blender that allows you to flatten um, flatten shapes for paper craft so you can check those out but I like unfolder it's a little app that I bought for Mac um, anyways um, so then what I do is I make sure those are scaled and I, I uh, make sure that they I use that to prototype the um, the 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 paper arrangement making sure that everything is going to fit on an eight by eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper I, I make sure everything's going to position well uh, I adjust all the flaps and the tabs to make sure that nothing is like finicky or frustrating as you're going to fold it oh what am I sorry guys um, there and then what I do is I pull them into affinity photo or uh, whatever and then I recreate and make sure I, I refine all the lines to be the consistent gray and the, the dotted lines make sure that they're that they're matching up with all the other pieces um, and then I pull them over to my iPad where I then take the shapes and do all the art with the shapes and then I export it back to my computer that I then format into a PDF to print a PDF to print and format them into a file a PDF that you can print out and that's where you get the final the final thing but here is our on the fly custom using the blank templates my neutron star contain the, the center of a neutron star compressed into a single box um, release the box or break the box a, a neutron star will erupt and decimate you know the whole ship but it's being transported through the galaxy to reignite a dying um, system um, replace their solar system um, with another one uh, and so there this is the seed of a new star that will hopefully uh, rescue a solar system so all that kind of stuff so really f easy and you can do that with all the pieces you can use barrels to turn them into radioactive barrels you can use them into containers you can use them into things like that you can turn the consoles into armory um, stands you could draw you like if we had this as a console you could um, you know have have the back here and it's just like shelves shelves of ammo here and on the front side you you know got the pla the plaster gun the blaster guns out there with their stocks and then do 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 you know do do 
and I got a couple grenades up there. So you can do that really easily with your blank templates to get exactly what you need to fit the things. But um, I think you answered this earlier, but how scalable is this? Like if I wanted to use 15 millimeter, would I, would it blow out of the details become too muddy? So ye, they're designed for 28 millimeter and eight by half. You can try to upscale the pieces or downscale them. Uh, you probably have an easier time downscaling. Uh, you get into fiddly bits with all the tabs and everything. So like this is nice size for for manipulating and like playing around with them, but you can make them smaller. This tab is gonna get smaller and so that becomes a little bit more difficult to uh, play with. Um, but when it comes to the art, like the beauty of why I try to do the black and white and make it really rough is because it doesn't have to be crisp and clean. It doesn't have to be precise. It, it gives the impression of what it is. And because it's obviously not attempting to be photorealistic, your brain does not like concern itself that this doesn't look accurate. Like your brain automatically recognizes, hey, that's, that's, that's a commuter console, but it's not exactly what it is. And so it doesn't, any mistakes or muddiness or whatever doesn't glaringly stand out. So, whew. yeah, that's a lot we've got. And even, even that, like, this is all the stuff that we didn't put together that still comes in the PDF. Like this is the bulkhead door, more cement barricades, more risers. Like all of this stuff is in one printing of the set. I didn't even build columns or tower or, or walls. Like I've got walls, I've got towers and uh, columns and yeah. So like all of this is in one PDF. It's over on Kofi, grab it, have it. And the beauty is you can keep printing this. If you want more columns, just print the columns page three times. If you want a couple bulkheads, print that a couple times. If you want more of these or, or lots of crates, print those. Risers, consoles, screens. Let me just toss this around. <laughs> keep building them. Just keep adding to them. And it's an infinite amount of fun as you put them together and use them and smash them and and do whatever and if your children grab them and we'll play with them and no harm no foul i spent a few minutes on this a piece of paper and i can print more and someone spills sprite and cheeto dust and on your on your table that's okay it's okay it's okay it's glorious so uh i'm gonna head out of here thanks everybody um I, I please share anything that you make with me. I want I want to see it. I want to see what you do with these. If you need, um, pick up the 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 set over on Kofi. It's a couple bucks. Um, if you are hesitant about paper terrain and you want to try it out, I have a free paper quick start that you can do the same thing with um, more fantasy dungeon style. Um, so try it out. If you've never done paper terrain, try it. I highly recommend it. Let me grab my paper goblins and. We're going to be on our way and go get some breakfast. So thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you later.